हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट एंड प्रिंसिपल ऑफ फ्लेम फोटोमेट्री व्हाई वी आर यूजिंग फ्लेम फोटोमेट्री बिकॉज फ्लेम फोटोमेट्री कैन बी यूज फॉर डिटरमाइन वेरियस एलिमेंट्स लाइक लिथियम कैल्सियम पोटेशियम मैग्नीशियम सोडियम बेरियम एक्सेट्रा सो दिस मेथड इज जस्ट लाइक एटोमिक एब्जॉर्बन स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी बट डिफरेंस इज दैट here no radiation source is used just like atomic absorption spectroscopy because in atomic absorption spectroscopy we are using electromagnetic radiation source which is cath hollow cathode tube but here by using flame itself our atoms gets excited after getting thermal energy now coming to the mechanism of this flame photometry so first we are taking the salt of the element For example, it is M X. This is salt. For example, if you want to analyze NaCl, if you want to analyze KCl, so this one is X represents to the halogen, and the M is the any element. Now it will convert into droplets, and these droplets will be heated in the flame. then in it will convert into ms means it will be solid residue after conversion into solid residue it will convert into gas ms vapor vaporized form okay then this vaporized form will again convert into m and x it will be in gaseous form gas here dissociation takes place this is atom so here our element m can go to the excited state by two methods first one is after getting thermal energy thermal energy from the flame itself and this energy is equal to h nu so it will go to the m star excited state this one is excited state from here it can get electromagnetic radiation and here also energy will be h nu it will go to the excited state m star after getting to the excited state it will come to the ground state again it will come to the ground state it will be m and during coming to this ground state it will emit some radiation emission of the radiation and this emission of the radiation is our area of interest in flame photometry because this emitted radiation is measured in flame photometry and this method is known as flame photometry it is also known as atomic emission spectroscopy and from here also this m star will come to the ground state ground state okay and uh, this method because here it is getting electromagnetic radiation and it is going to the excited state then after going to the excited state it will come back to the ground state but this method is known as atomic absorption spectroscopy but in atomic absorption spectroscopy absorption is measured but here in flame photometry emission is measured
So from excited state, whenever it is coming to the ground state, it will release the energy of H nu. So it will be minus H nu. Now coming to the principle of flame photometry. Sample is, is spread into the flame. So this is the basic principle involved in flame photometry. So here sample is spread into the flame. So in flame photometry we are taking liquid sample and that liquid sample is spread into the flame. And after spreading to the flame sample will be evaporated means liquid of the sample will be evaporated and that will convert into the solid residue and that solid residue will be vaporized means it will convert into the form of vapors and after conversion into vapors it will convert into the form of atoms by heating because heating is there by flame from that atom some atoms are getting thermal energy and that is going to the excited state after getting the energy it will go to the higher level of energy that is excited state and these excited atoms coming down to the ground state after getting in thermal energy atoms will go to the excited state and after going to the excited state it will come back to the ground state and up during coming back to the ground state the atoms will emit some, some radiation and when it is emitting some radiation that emitted radiation is measured in flame photometry and this is the basic concept or principle involved in flame photometry now coming to the energy levels if we are taking example of two energy levels for example this one is E1 and this one is E2 if we are taking our element here then it will get some energy and it will go to the excited state which is E2 here it is getting energy E is equal to H nu then after that it will come back to the ground state E2 to E1. And here also energy is equal to be minus H nu. And this is the emission of the radiation. If we want to calculate the energy difference between both these points, means from excited state to ground state, then it will be E2 minus E1 is equal to H nu. Here nu is equal to c by lambda so e2 minus e1 is equal to h into c by lambda if we want to calculate the wavelength for uh, this condition then it will be lambda is equal to h into c upon e2 minus e1 lambda is equal to h into c upon e2 minus e1 so by using this formula we can calculate the wavelength of our compound so here h is Planck's constant and the value for Planck's constant is 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 27 arc second and c is velocity of electromagnetic radiation what is the value for c it is 2.8 998 into 10 to the power 10 centimeter per second so these are the constants so by using this formula we can calculate the lambda max for our compound our selected element now i am giving some examples which can be analyzed by flame photometry serial number element number
color and then wavelength wavelength in nanometer so first one is calcium it will produce the color orange or sometimes brick red wavelength is 423 nanometer second one is barium it will give lemon green color and the wavelength is 554 nanometer third one is sodium it will produce yellow color and wavelength is 589 nanometer fourth one is potassium it will produce violet color and wavelength is 767 nanometer so these are some examples which can be analyzed by flame photometry and the color of the flames are identical because every element is showing different color at different wavelengths color is identical for the elements as well as wavelength is also identical for the elements so by selecting this wavelength we can adjust our slit for determination of specified elements by using flame photometry so this is the overview about uh, mechanism principle and some examples of flame photometry thank you